Welcome to Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Well, it's the start of season three, and this is our season opener. We had something else a little bit in mind uh, before we left and took a brief break for the holidays, but whenever you have Fuzzy Butts, plans do sometimes change. And uh, Ginger, that's the, the way. Let's start. Oh, I you know, it's been so long, I didn't even introduce you uh, properly. You didn't. Uh, you know, I didn't even introduce myself properly. Well, for those, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what having three three weeks off uh, does to you, and also having a sick fuzzy butt does to you. You you kind of have to remember how to pick back up again. Well, as much as it drives fuzzy butts all over this place, this big old earth of ours, absolutely nuts when they hear me say it. I am the host of the show, your big dog, Luke Robinson. Back again with you after three weeks off for the holidays. Happy holidays to everyone. Ginger, uh, I guess happy holidays to you as well. We're starting a new season, but it was uh, it really wasn't happy holidays for us, though, was it? No, it was not happy holidays for us. Although it wasn't bad, not horrible, but it, it, it they could have been better. Yes, and I forgot to introduce my co-host, Ginger Morgan. She's the executive director of the Puppy Up Foundation. And she's also the co-host and co-producer of this show. Uh, but she's also, I think, more importantly and relevant to this episode, she's the co-parent of my fuzzy butt, Indiana Jones, uh, who is 12 years old, my great Pyrenees. And uh, I guess right before Christmas, Ginger, you were uh, out of town to, uh, with your family, your folks, and... Uh, Indiana he started to turn ill. Uh, he be, got sick, and uh, we didn't know what was going on. We took him to the uh, vet uh, right before uh, Christmas, the week before Christmas, and right. he wasn't spiking a, a fever. We weren't finding out what the problem was, uh, but you left for the holidays, and, and uh, he progressively got worse, and I was here taking care of him myself, and I was having a, a real hard, a lot of trouble uh getting him up and down uh as some of our listeners and, and know about indiana's condition would know that he's had this past year 2023 he was diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy and we've been really rehabbing and trying to get him up and functional uh for many 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 months and all that completely gone uh in a matter of a week i guess so Ginger got back from uh, spending, uh, you got back from spending Christmas with your family and uh, we uh, took him to the uh, Hollywood feed to get a bath, uh, to clean him up and try to figure out what was going on. And Ginger, we found uh, a puncture wound in his right elbow um, that had turned into an infection. And uh, what we've since learned that dogs that have uh, any type of mobility issue, Ginger, um, and they're constantly on their sides or laying about, unless you're up exercising them or moving them, they're sedentary. And like sedentary uh, people, people that are sedentary, that can get bed sores and ulcers. We now know that dogs can get uh, uh, what are called hygromas. I think that's what they're called, right? I believe that's what... Uh... Hygromas. Basically, just yeah. you know, just basically sore spots, and if they're and if they they're laying on them for uh, a long period of time, they can rupture, which it seems like Indiana's did, and he had a bunch of fur. You know, he had he had these this gnarly patch of fur on his elbows that were supposed to be protecting him from these hygromas, uh, but this hadn't one ruptured, and, and Ginger, we just didn't see it, and it got infected, and it was. Uh, uh, weeping, uh, uh, lots of goop, lots of pussy goop and nasty stuff. And so we've then, I guess, the week after Christmas, the week of my birthday, I we took him in, uh, got him checked out by Dr. Angie Zinkas. Um, and uh, sure enough, it was a full-blown infection. Uh, he had not become septic, but we think probably kind of close because he was acting febrile, really having a huff, uh, tough time to getting around and struggling uh, to, to stand up for long periods of time. So uh, thankfully, we got him in to see Dr. Zinkas uh, uh, early enough, Ginger, and we've been treating him aggressively with both oral and topical antibiotics uh, ever since. 
So where are we at? Where are we at? So that I don't talk the entire show, Ginger. Where are we at? How is how is Indiana doing? So he is doing much better um, since he's been to the vet. Is that's been we took him. I want to say on December twenty sixth. Let me right after, um, right after Christmas. Yeah, I think it. No, no, no. It was new right after New Year's. I think because yeah. So anyway. Uh, but he's doing much better. He's standing on his own to eat his food. Um, he's walking much better. He is prior to this. I mean, like he would get up and just walk around. But now he wants to get up, but he still needs help actually getting up. And, you know, Luke, I do the one, two and three. And one, I help him. Two, I give him a little bit of help. And on three, he's got to get up on his own. You know, I've got him like halfway up. So I've I have him lift up on his own to work those muscles again. And we've had him, uh, he's had uh, acupuncture since then, no water therapy because it was an open wound. So that uh, weather permitting, we didn't get to talk about the weather, but weather permitting, he will have acupuncture and water therapy on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So um, I want to get back into that with him and just doing some exercises that we can do. But he is... From where he was when I got home Christmas afternoon to now is, you know, he's a good, what would you say, 60, 70 percent better. He's just not doing that getting up on his own. So uh, we're working on that. We he's a lot better. That's the good news. That's the most that's the most important takeaway from all this. It was I won't say it was touch and go. It was not that critical. I don't feel like. But Ginger and I didn't know what was going on. And uh, and uh, attitude is much better now. Yeah, we were very worried. I I, I was very worried about him. And uh, so it was not uh, a a restful, peaceful, happy holidays for us. And so um, we're starting the season three of Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Uh, just finally uh, taking a breath through all this and uh, feeling like Indy's, he's a lot stronger. Uh, he's probably 80%, 70, 80%. You're right. Uh, because he was down and having difficulty with his mobility and struggling and fighting with the infection for so many weeks, we lost a lot of the work that we'd been doing with his uh, with his mobility. So um, we're, we're back again this week uh, focused on that. But however, we did have a, a snowstorm that hit us yesterday. Uh, and so it's it's uh, and Indiana is 12 years old. And, and he he I think he thinks that snow was a young dog's game. I don't think he cares for the snow. I've got some pictures here, Ginger. I wanted to show everybody uh, and. Uh, I think I think unlike the the Christmas holiday episode where I tried to share photos and failed totally, I think I could do it this time. So let's see. Uh, how do we do this? Here we go. All right, are we seeing that, Ginger? Yep, I see it. He's got it. He's sticking his tongue out at you. Well, this is perfect because this is Tuesday, airing on Tuesday. So it's Tongue Out Tuesday. That is, that's right. Tongue Out Tuesday. I, I lost, I lost uh, you, Ginger. I can't see your screen. Um, I just see the pictures, but that's okay. I don't need to see the screen. We've got this one. So, so this was after almost 24 hours of snow dumping on us in the Memphis area, Ginger. I think we probably accumulated what four, maybe five inches of snow, and uh, at least, yeah, at <laughs> least it was it was a it's not not anything substantial by New England standards, but it was quite a snow, and and I don't think Indiana <laughs> he's not liking it, so he's sticking his tongue out. Uh, and so we, Ginger, you, you, you failed to mention that we also got him adjusted. Dr. Parker came out and he, and Indy was totally out of whack. Um, uh, you know, when he's having difficulty getting up and down, he kind of has a tendency to fall over. And that's actually maybe what we think exacerbated the hygroma, had it rupture and form into an ulcer, became ulcerated and then infected Um, So, uh, fortunately, Indiana was feeling good enough to have Dr. Parker come and adjust him, and uh, I think that helped out, certainly with his, oh, that's, we're jumping the, we're jumping the, I think we're getting, I'm going a little bit too fast, that was my broken. So, yeah, Indiana, um, Dr. Dr. Parker is so (sighs) good to us in Indiana, and Indiana 
absolutely does not like getting that adjustment. This one was, um, he was quite vocal about it. And, and you saw in the picture that we do have to put a muzzle on him um, for that procedure. Uh, the last time he was adjusted, it wasn't quite that bad. But uh, Luke, you and I, neither one like to be around when he's getting his adjustments. So Yeah, he looks like uh, Anthony Hopkins there. He looks like uh, Silence silence of the Indiana Jones. He has his oh. uh, Hannibal Lecter mask on. His Hannibal Lecter. But, but you're right, Ginger. Uh, it, it, uh, clearly, uh, structurally, uh, his body has been stressed. It's out of whack. And it, he doesn't understand that Dr. Parker is aligning him or making some adjustments to him physically to try to get him to move uh, more together uh, with greater alignment. And uh, so uh, he, did. <laughs> he And any, anybody that's watching on, uh, is actually seeing the, the video and stuff, you can see we have uh, mats everywhere for him to walk on so that he doesn't, I have hardwood floors in the house. And so... Um, that is not good. So we have the mats going. Typically, we take him out front because it's just easier. There's just one small step. But then we do have a handicap ramp going down the back steps for dogs that are old. But uh, yeah, we so we have those mats and that, that helps him tremendously. Yeah, um, uh, it's downstairs at the Morgan Manor where Indiana resides. We have yoga mats and those I guess you call them garage mats, those thick garage mats. So he has traction and it helps him uh, be able to to get up uh, on his own because that's the next step. We need to get him. We have to get him to the point where his hind legs and his musculature is strong enough to be able to hoist himself up. And that's a procedure, uh, but we're working on that. But I think that's a, a fairly thorough uh assessment where where indiana's at right now ginger but all of this and where i'm going with this ginger has um has prioritized my 2024 and that's relevant to fuzzy butts and friends um it was a tough time for me uh thinking that i might lose indiana before um ginger i got back on the road with him uh again so for some of our audience members that don't know Indiana Jones and I walked the entire length of the West Coast from Canada to Mexico in 2014. It was about 1,700 miles and some change, and we had quite the adventure. Hudson was with us for a little ways, but uh, I don't think he contributed a whole lot to the adventure. So it ended up being me and Nanny Jones, and uh, we had... Hudson contributed to the adventure. It just wasn't what you wanted him to contribute. It was a negative contribution. It was what it Hudson was, wanted to contribute. It, it, it ended he up... should have listened to me all along. I told you he didn't want to walk again. He wasn't well, but, falling for your, your, let's go for a walk, Hudson. Yes, Hudson was already of the mind that, Poppy, I already did the walk from Austin to Boston. Hell no, I'm not walking the West Coast. And certainly, hell no, I'm not walking with Indiana. Um, so yes, yes, uh, just like maybe I should have listened about walk three and, and waited rather than pushing Grayson because that was a tremendous, uh, oh, that was, uh, the, the hardest, the most challenging endeavor I've, I've ever done in my life. And I think Ginger and this is, we're, we're all going somewhere with this podcast, with this episode. And, uh, I, and upon reflection, Ginger, I think I, I damaged myself severely in, in walk three, um, uh, I don't know if you recall, but, uh, um, it ironically in Hudson Falls, uh, we were going up kind of in the downtown area on a, just a little tight four lane road. I think that was New York nine or it was turning into New York nine, but man, trying to push that motorized cart and Grayson on top through some of those winding highways in New York state, uh, up and down the mountains. It was a, it was a freaking nightmare and challenging physically and dangerous at times. And as we were sort of a, this, this, this little, <laughs> it's just this little incline that goes almost straight up in a, in a curve. And when you're pushing you're and you have this rickety sidewalk that that's has broken and has grass growing out, it's just a mess. And you're trying to push, push, 300 pounds of machine and dog up ginger the the just we got off balance and and everything fell over to the right 
And it was a nightmare scenario, Ginger, because uh, the, we were on the highway and fortunately it was going up into a downtown area. So traffic was moving slow, but the traffic coming from the downtown going down the hill, they were coming around a curve. So they really had no line of sight. So um, I, Grayson and I and the, the, the motorized cart, our Rasanante, the thing I pushed him in, we all fell over to the right. And as we were falling, I saw that Grayson was falling into the street and I tried to grab it to try to prevent it from going into the street. And so I really damaged, as you know, my left wrist uh, taking the fall. And also I fell on my right knee trying to brace Grayson's fall. So this was during walk three. Um, fortunately, we made it out okay. Nobody got injured, knock on wood. But I, I think I did some substantial damage to my right knee. Now, fast forward about two months ago, as some of you know, I broke my foot. I was getting back in shape. That time of year, it's time to get healthy, get physical again, think about getting back on the road for my next adventure. And I'd been uh, doing cardio and exercising. And Ginger, I, I, uh, and while I was exercising, um, I was doing laterals and I was going from left to right. And uh, uh, I didn't catch my right foot correctly. And all of my weight went on my right foot and I fractured it, broke it into a spiral break. And that was the picture I was showing a second ago, because this is this is sort of the nut of everything. So going through that with Indiana has inspired me to get back on the road and 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 take one last one last adventure with Indiana Jones, his last ride with me. And uh, but to do so um, uh, physically, uh, that's going to be quite a challenge. So before I guess I get into the physical aspect of it, um, I'm not sure if I did a really good job of, of, of presenting or introing the, the walk four, but it's time, Ginger, for me to get back on the road with Nanny. Don't you think? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we so, <laughs> so, so your big dog is it's time for my fourth walk, this one with Indiana Jones. And I say walk, Ginger, because it's not going to be a walk. It's going, well, for me, it's going to be a walk. But for Indiana Jones, it's going to be a push, just like Grayson. So uh, clearly, Nanny can't walk more than, how, how far do you think we have him walking now? I think when we got it to his peak, maybe half a mile, I think is what we have. But that's not on his own. He he's not doing that distance entirely on his own. We have he has assistance from you and me, right? He does. I would say mm, probably a but not not quite a half of a mile. Maybe a quarter, a little over, maybe a little bit over a quarter of a mile. But you know, he wears one of those help him up harnesses, and um, at the peak before he got sick, you know, I would hold the back of it, but not hold him up. I just had a hold of it so that he could maneuver on his own. Um, he, as you know, kind of tumbles to the left a little bit. And that was just to kind of keep him from falling over. He's not walking on his own, like you said. Right. Well, he's not going to have to uh, walk and walk for it. It's going to be all me <laughs> pushing him, just like pushing Grayson up and down the mountains in New York State. Uh, but uh, this is going to be a lot different, though. So so I'm doing this year, coming this year, I'm doing, and, and, and already preparations are underway for Walk 4, um, Indiana Jones' last ride, or last adventure, or last crusade. We're going to play on something cute with Indiana Jones. Uh, but I feel like, Ginger, he's going to be in good enough condition for us to take a, a bit of a walk together. And uh, this one's going to be a lot less ambitious, Um New York State, uh, the the Hudson River uh, was a was uh, originally three hundred miles from the origin of the Hudson River down to the New York City, where it it dumps into the East River in the Atlantic. And uh, but we had to take out about I think about fifty miles or so out of that because as we got closer to the city, the 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 conditions, the really the only road that was navigable uh, for me going um from uh you know like uh not harper's ferry um what is that uh dobbs ferry um some of those really nice uh 
really nice, wonderful New York cities. They're all so lovely coming up just north of, of the city. But man, that Highway 9, it's like four lanes, two lanes at times, no shoulders. And then the sidewalks on either one had trees and Oh, it was a nightmare. It was just so was there construction going on as well or not? Yeah, it's construction going on. It, it they threw everything at us. So so we, we ended up only doing 250 miles. It took us a little over six weeks. We had uh, I had the one injury that slowed us down and everything. So uh walk four as it stands right now, it's gonna be just 160 miles, but most importantly, it's not gonna be on the road system. We're going to be doing trails the entire way, and there is a rails trails, it looks like, um, for most of the stretch, most of the 160 miles uh, uh, from start to finish. So on that note, are you ready to talk about the where to where, the, the walk details, get into the walk? I, I am. I'm anxious, anxiously waiting. Yeah, I kind of bury the lead. But let me ask you this sure. question. Are you going to go up and, like, ride a bike or something on this trail so that you know everything about it prior to getting on it? Well, I am because it's, well, let's, let's get into the, let's, let's, let me announce the walk location, the walk logistics. I already have a map ready to go. Share the screen here. Um, I recommended you checking this out um, on our YouTube channel, fuzzybuttstudios.com. Calm. If not, can you see that, Ginger? Uh, yes. Now I can. Okay. I wanted well, to. It went away. I, I know. I wanted to do this first. Okay. Here's the overview. I've got the overview right here. There's me and Nanny out the other day when it, right before it snowed. We were out logging some, not miles, but we were out walking together, healing each other. There's the poop in the tree. I want to get to that. All right. Here, here is walk four. Ta-da. This is walk four. Ta-da. Uh, yep, the reveal. Um, I need to do a better job with my reveals. So... Uh, uh, where are you starting? Wait, and... wait, let, let, let me set the table a little bit. So, okay. Okay, so clearly, since I've broken my foot, I've sustained some sort of injury from walk three. I'll get into more more about that in a little bit. And then I've got to get some more x-rays and, and I have some other diagnostics I have to do to make sure that I can do this physically. I guess, Ginger, what I wanted to say was was making sure walk four is not going to be the same challenge physically for me as walk three. That was the most important thing. So uh, when I had the original idea uh, the, over the holidays, uh, you know, I've got to get back on the road with them, but it has to be, there has to, has to be some type of trail system because one of the things that I know uh, doing the rails to trails from Pittsburgh all the way to Washington, D.C., which was 315 miles of contiguous trail system on the rails to trails, is that it's a low grade, right? So you don't have any, it's not up and down the mountains like New York State, where you're going straight up and then straight down, uh, yeah. which was very dangerous for me, pushing. And then at some point when you're going down, trying not to lose 300 pounds of cargo. There's one or two times, Ginger, that, that, that our, that my landscape motorized landscape cart it doesn't have brakes so <laughs> there are a couple of times I almost lost Grayson my precious cargo so uh, I, I so physically and because of all the risk ginger this is going to be a low risk walk for me for Indiana it's gonna it truly is going to be a nature walk that's what this is all going to be about it's just about me getting on the road with my boy of course and raising awareness about the work that we do at the Puppy Up Foundation. And cancer and our and, and our companion animal mates. So so I looked at Florida. I looked at Illinois. Inter interestingly, Kansas, two three of the flattest states in the country. But then <laughs> I realized, my goodness gracious, we have you know as you know, Ginger, 
something that we didn't have in walk three. We didn't have, I didn't have, we didn't have really any support up there. It was just me and Grace, me pushing Grayson up and down the mountains, enduring a lot of pain and all alone, all by myself, getting sick, getting beat up. And it, I, I got to tell you, Ginger, it was tough. It was very hard. Um, so I kind of wanted to do a walk where we have support, a really great support net network or support system as well. So you and I talked about it. And so this is the route for walk four. It works out perfectly in so many different ways, Ginger. It was like it was meant to be. So we're going to start in Chicago is where walk four is beginning. Exactly where, I'm not sure. Uh, there's so many wonderful parks right there on uh lake superior um not superior michigan uh, mm -hmm. lake michigan and so we're gonna kind of stay um along the lake most of what most of the way there are trail systems they're just a network of trail systems all along uh michigan lake and uh then when we get to milwaukee there's a number of trail systems so i'm not really sure logistically uh, the route that we're going to take or the trail system that we're going to take. But the most important trail system and the longest trail system is the one from Milwaukee to Madison. So the walk is going to be from Chicago to Milwaukee, from Milwaukee to Madison, Wisconsin. We've got a wonderful, wonderful group of, of uh, Puppy Up supporters and friends that have been with us for years that will want to celebrate this. And we've never, we've, we've never been there. We've never walked there before. So um, we're very excited to have our ending point where we're going to have the final mile will be in Madison, Wisconsin. I wanted to show the actual uh, route, um, the trail system. So those of you that are in the area can have an idea of what we're... Okay, so this is the actual rails to trails, Ginger, from... It's not actually in Milwaukee. It starts west of Milwaukee, as you can see. It looks like it's Waukesha. Uh, Waukesha. Is, Waukesha is where the trail system starts. And this is called the Glacial Drumlin State Trail. Now, to answer your question, Ginger, since this is a rails to trails, we know a couple of things. We know it's completely off the road, so we're not running the risk of me or Indiana getting killed by, you know, knucklehead drivers that aren't paying attention or on their cell phone. Like, I've almost been killed more times than I can remember on the road by people like that. So we've got that, but also because it's a rails to trails, it used to be an old railroad track, right? Well, we know that Railroad companies don't like paying for fuel, so they're all low grade. So I think the maximum grade that we're going to or or incline or decline will encounter on this trail system, Ginger, is six percent. That's the maximum. Do, do you know what the <laughs> you, no one do you laugh at that, but do you know what the you know what the maximum was up in New York State, up and down the mountains? <laughs> do you know what we hit? <laughs> We had 16 degree, a 16 degree grade that we had to go up and down and up in New York. And I don't know if you have any idea what that's like, but it's extremely dangerous and very, very difficult. Uh, I think before then, I think 12 degree was the, the most I'd ever been on, but this was pushing weight. So I'll take six degrees uh, any day um, of over what we just got, what I just got through on walk three. So uh, so that's the trail system. So from Chicago to Milwaukee, we'll pick up the series of trail systems, and then we'll hit this, the most important one, which I think this is probably, Ginger, a 70-mile trail, I think is what it's from start to finish. Uh, it's the Glacial Drumlin uh, Trail. Um, and between that, I am going to have to, uh, so I guess to go back to, to your original question, um, I know you have many. Well, I have many myself. I <laughs> I but certainly haven't thought this thing all the way through yet. Um, uh, is I, I will be going up there to actual bike it, to walk it, to know every intimate detail of this walk because I can't afford any risks or any surprises on on walk four. Thank you. Well, <laughs> well, you won't have to come rescue us. We got people up there, unlike New York State, where if we got in a pickle, we were on our own. But I think yeah, we you were, have yeah. people in, in Chicago, Milwaukee, and in uh, in Madison that can help. Us. Yeah, yeah, Madison that will help us out if if we get in a tight spot. But we shouldn't. 
because it's a good trail system, Rails to Trails. It's a wonderful organization, and they're so well maintained. Uh, the 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 trail, uh, <clears throat> the composition of the trail is uh, decomposed granite and pack gravel. So the the other consideration is being able to push that motorized cart because that's that's really that's the linchpin of 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 walk four because Indy can't walk. And I'm not going to be able to push Indiana on in very extreme um, off-road type conditions like we had in Walk Three. So this has to be an easy walk for us, and and it just so happens it works out perfectly. So that's kind of uh, that's yeah, I, I'm still I'm still into that. So Walk One was how many miles? Twenty three hundred Austin to Boston. Walk two was basically 1,700. 1,700, yes, yes. If, like, we're walk six, three was 250. 150. And, and then walk, walk four is approximately 160. 160. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see where you're... You know what? I, and, as, as the years go on, as the world turns and time, as we all age, you know, like, like walks... Let's see, this is walk four. Walk seven is going to be 3.2 miles hey, around. Man, whatever I could take. That, it, 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 yes, that's true. But walk, walk, my, first, my first I walk was, was when I was in my 30s. And uh, that was definitely a different operating environment than when I was in my 40s. And I did the West Coast walk, which in of itself was crazy dangerous um, and very risky. The Pacific Coast Highway. For those of you who don't know, uh, we didn't do, we haven't done trail systems. <laughs> the rails to trails from Pittsburgh to DC was really the only trail system that we've done. Um, yes, that's post. where we have that iconic, you know, tent photo. Yes. That, that our that's... friend Mari took. And you met uh, Brock Ketterman then too. Mm -hmm. Yes, the trail systems have been kind to us on our travels. And I look forward to it because, uh, it's just it's a different kind of walk. You're but but the trade off though is that you don't have the awareness component to it though. But I believe with the public trail systems around Chicago and Milwaukee and then and then Madison, we'll get enough of that. You know, we don't just being on the trail system between the cities is going to be fine. But yes, clearly now going into my fifties, yes, uh, I, I 160 miles. I'm okay with that. You know, and I, I want to go ahead, Ginger, we talked about this, but I'm budgeting uh, 30 days, you know, a full month, maybe six weeks to do this because I, I can't muscle it. I can't go into it with uh, with that mentality where I have I have to make X number of miles because uh, with my operating condition, I'll get more into that in a minute. Um, uh, phys mistakes that cost me physically on walk four would, would 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 end the walk could be uh, disastrous for me. Uh, I've, I've done so much so much damage to myself physically from the four thousand two hundred and fifty miles I've now walked uh, for the Puppy Up Foundation and for uh, awareness of cancer and companion animals and one cancer. Uh, I've done quite a bit of damage to myself, uh, and I think walk three uh, might have been the worst because I think I I'm fairly certain I damaged my knee. And that injury has done some damage to what's called my perineal nerve. That my perineal nerve runs all the way, your perineal nerve runs all the way down your leg to your foot. And I think I had had some hidden damage uh, that's done some damage to my nerve that's causing some significant uh, neuropathy in my right foot, which has gotten worse. And I also think that's how I, my theory is that may actually how be how I broke my foot. That may be the source uh, and the cause of the injury in the first place. So walk four is largely dependent upon me and my ability to walk, or more importantly, push Indiana. So let's talk about that for a second, Ginger, because it's it's still uncertain because that will determine the dates. You and I, I'm so I'm, I just I'm, I'm ambitious. I, I there's no reason for me to to suspect why Indiana won't be alive and healthy um, in uh, May or June or even in the fall. But he's 12, and as you know, you and I both know that's old for Pyrenees. That's old for a large breed dog, and I just want him to be well enough to be able to fully enjoy being on the road. Because as you know, he loves being outdoors. He loved being on the road with me. And it's time for, for our last adventure together. But 
when I do this walk four, the dates will be entirely dependent upon my physical condition. And I don't know, Ginger, I don't know. I've got to go see my foot, the break in the spiral break in my foot was healing. I think Ginger, we're going into 11 weeks uh, since I broke my foot. So uh, I've already begun applying pressure on it and, and walking on it with my boot with and without my boot on and it swells up pretty good uh, pretty much every time I put pressure on it. So I've got to go to the orthopedic surgeon again. And then more importantly, we have to try to find out what's causing this neuropathy in my right foot, which is, has gotten pretty bad. I, the, the, foot, the break in my foot, uh, interestingly enough, the break in my foot brought it to my attention, but it also accelerated it too. So I don't know uh what sort of i don't know what my i don't know what my right foot is going to look like after all of this so that's a big question well this is something that i just want to just just want to throw out there that um i'm not pushing you and indiana okay it's not me pushing you in indiana in the little go in the little garden motorized garden cart i can okay. see this I don't think we've ever relied on you to be our savior on the, on the road, Ginger. I don't, there's, when we got on the road, there's nobody saving us but me. And if I can't save us, then we're, we're, we're sunk. So, uh, so yeah, I have to be, I have, I, have to, I got you off the road and walk one and two, actually three was difficult, but. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were there for us, but not on the road. I'm talking about on the road. Oh, on, you you yeah. couldn't be there physically on the road with this to help no. us out. Yeah, of course. You're, you're, you're running logistics and you'll run support or help with support. However we do it. This one, because it's only like between four and six weeks and 160 miles and we have a support network and it's only eight hours or so away from from base camp here in Memphis, it, it shouldn't be that complicated logistically. This shouldn't be a difficult walk. It's the physical challenge that it represents to me, given my uh, the problem I have with my foot, my right foot now. That's really the, the question mark I have. And so uh, I'll know more when I have my foot and my knee x-rayed. I'm going to do ginger. I had... <clears throat> um, in, uh, I think November or October of last year, 2023, I had a nerve conductivity test done on my on my right leg to try to see what's causing this problem and figure out what's going on. So, but whatever the case is, Ginger, I feel confident that with proper rehab and training, that I will be able to push Indiana in the motorized cart uh, for at least five to six miles continuously and do that for five days out of seven and just have appropriate amount of rest. So I think I'm not, I believe I'm being realistic. I'm setting the target high and ambitiously because I've got to push myself because I've got to get myself back in shape. I have to get my body physically working uh, at its peak, the peak at its best that I can, and then get back on the road. So uh, the question I have is, can I do that? We originally talked about launching May, um, mid to late May uh, and have this thing wrapped up in June of this year. But truthfully, Ginger, that's only four months away. And I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure that my foot's going to be working right by May or June. So yeah, let's not, yeah, probably need to wait. To well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, September, that, yeah. I'm thinking September, October, I think we launched no later than the 1st of October. So we have October. It'll still be, uh, it won't be too cold out. We'll, you know, we'll be kind of in the Chicago area. We'll be cold on, off, off the coming off the river uh, or the lake. Um, we had the lake effect there, but I, I that's a more realistic goal for me. We can talk about dates, but September certainly be on the road no later than than the beginning of October. And this being again only a four week or so uh, walk, um, it, it will make every. You know, it gets chilly up there starting in october well but well I, I looked at the weather conditions for may and it's chilly there in may it, it, it can be yeah. you know, we have our walk in madison and uh last year that it was beautiful uh but sometimes it can be chilly but you know well for the dogs they don't mind it they like it to be chilly i know i've been there a couple times in the morning it's been like 40 degrees and 
you know, in Memphis at that t time of the year in, in May, it's already, you know, it can be already 80 degrees here. So that was a little, a little bit of a shock, but um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I, it, look, I'm just keeping it kind of open right now. For some reason in my mind, I don't really want to do it during the summer months because of the, the vacation and the traffic on the trail systems. Um, but, but, you know, that I don't know, really know why I have that sort of mentality Oh, I have that preconceived sort of thinking um, in my head. So we're going to find the dates that make sense. I don't want to be on the road when it's too hot and miserable, but it really doesn't get that crazy hot and humid uh, up in, um, I guess, uh, eastern Wisconsin, northern Illinois. So It depends uh, on who you're asking. Some of them think that it's, you know. No. Yeah. I'm a Texas boy and we have a different standard for heat and humidity down. Yeah. There. <laughs> it's you know, it's funny when you talk to somebody up there and they're like, oh, it's so hot here today. I'm like, well, how hot is it? It's 85. I'm like, oh, it was 97 here today with a heat index of 115. So yeah, it's all relative. Well, I, I, I did that coming through Arkansas and through Memphis yeah, in August of 2008. And I never want to do that ever again. That I, I was by myself, as you know, we were, were walking across the Arkansas Delta. It's triple digits. The humidity was uh, 115, 118. Uh, the boys couldn't walk with me. Hudson and Murphy couldn't walk with me. So I was doing it all by myself. And I had as little gear on as possible that I could walk. But I, Ginger, it was the humidity was so suffocating. I could only walk for a quarter of a mile, I mean, not a quarter, three quarters of a mile. I don't even think I made it a mile at a time where I would have to stop and I would struggle to get my breath. Wow, that was, man, that was crazy. So I don't yeah, I remember getting that. getting an email saying there's this guy walking from Austin to Boston with his two great Pyrenees and he's in, he's in Arkansas and he needs a place to have an event or something. And I'm like, uh, yeah, bring him here because I... You know, that email did not say that the boys, Hudson and Murphy, were not walking with you at that point. It it said that you were walking. And my whole thing was he's not leaving here with the Great Pyrenees and walking because it was 100 degrees, I think, pretty much. No, we, we, that we, we, I, we, yeah, it we was 100. I think it was 100 degrees that weekend that you guys came to Memphis. Well, well, yeah, because we, 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 when I walked into Memphis, we had Hudson and Murphy and we did, we celebrated Hudson's birthday and there was a little dog that had uh, heat exhaustion or something at the event because mm -hmm. you, you just, just doing the event, it was triple digits. It, it was crazy hot, but of course, I, I th this has never been about risking my, my the lives of my fuzzy butts at all. It's about the adventure and doing it smartly and safely. And that's what that's why I spend so much time talking it through, analyzing it, researching it, through thinking things through, through thinking things through as thoroughly as possible, and then going out there and testing it. So I will. So I'm trying not. We're trying not to impact too much on this episode. Again, uh, this was not the planned season opener of Fuzzy Butts and Friends, but it scared the hell out of me. Indiana scared the hell out of me. I think Ginger and I are both kind of shell shocked. I'm tired. I look, as you can see, I look great. I gained weight uh, uh, being on my broken foot and my my fuzzy butt for the past couple of months. I've got to get ex mm. exercising again. So um, I don't want to unpack too much. I just want to announce it. It's going to be the big thing of 2024. Um, and we're going to do it smart. We're going to do it safe, Ginger. I'm going to go up. It's just an eight-hour drive to get to Chicago. And so I'll get out there and um, and 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 start mapping it, start looking at it. And unlike New York, actually, I did most of New York State. It just it was like a there was like an almost year difference. No, there's maybe a six or seven month difference, and stuff up stuff up there changes a lot in six or seven months. <laughs> While well, you were driving and yeah, oh my not God. walking. Nobody yeah. has any idea what a nightmare walk three was for me. I am lucky to be alive. God help me and Grayson. <laughs> Grayson. I don't I don't think I need to get back on the road with him, but I don't think he ever wants to do that. <laughs> he barely even wants to be anywhere close to you. Oh my gosh. Oh, I gotta laugh. Every time you say, Oh, Grayson, come over here by Poppy, he always comes to me. 
But speaking of cold, it's cold outside. It's in the single digits here. And you didn't let me in the opener. I always talk about the weather, and you kind of get irritated with me sometimes, and you skipped over it. I told you up on the opener. I'm just, and I'm cold, and I have to turn off the heater. So it doesn't so, doesn't make ambient noise for the podcast. So uh, I did. The that's, weather is is pertinent. Well, that's this time. That's why I'm trying to wrap things up. Uh, I didn't want to belabor any aspect of this. I want to lay the framework for it, Ginger. Um, get people in the, the Madison, Chicago, Milwaukee area excited about it. Uh, um, you know, it's it's always a great thing to be back on the road and 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 doing our thing. And we're going to be you know camping out on the trail. It's going to be wonderful, but it's going to be smart and safe. And and we have a lot of work to do. By we, I mean by we, I mean me. <laughs> I mean, no kidding. Yes. Side training and rehabbing is going to be painful. It's going to be long, and I really don't know at the end of it what uh, sort of. Uh, uh, I don't know what sort of situation my foot is going to be in. Um, what mobility issues I'm going to have. Uh, going forward, I'm I'm fairly concerned about that, but we'll see. We'll see. The dates, as I said, are open. Um, rehabbing training, that's what I'm going to be doing. All right, we, we do have uh, a lot of things going on in 2024. Uh, we're also doing, uh, for those of you who haven't been following me on X, and to a certain extent on Facebook, uh, but X or Twitter is where I do my art stuff. I've ginger, I've become sort of a legitimate artist there and collector of uh, digital artwork and i've built a very good wonderful supportive community there and, and most of them are dog lovers animal lovers as well and so i've been getting uh, uh all of some of them very excited about an art auction uh that we're going to have in march that i need you and dennis to get on and we need to work towards to get that up and and go on i think in march is when we wanted to do that so uh we're going to have, we want to get that going on. We have, I have dozens and dozens of artists that are going to donate some of their wonderful art. These are legitimate artists. Uh, yes, they, some of them don't do it digitally. Some of them actually do it physically and it's digital photos that we then mint, uh, into NFTs and put on a chain, which is a cryptocurrency, whether it's ETH or Tezos or Solano, but we're going to have it all figured out. Like with Tezos now, you can buy it on credit cards. I tell you what, there's a lot of really cool things going on in the art world online. And I got a wonderful community uh, of artists that are very supportive and they're animal lovers as well. So we're going to do something prior to walk full. We're going to do something really cool uh, and exciting with an art auction, Ginger. So um, I'm glad you mentioned that um, and doing it in <laughs> March, March 16th is the 16th anniversary of your first walk with um hudson and murphy 16 years wow Six, 16 years yeah we I got a, every every second of that 16 years i've been on the road hole is on the road <laughs> i feel every second of that no but i've aged beautifully though haven't i you couldn't tell 16 <laughs> Oh, it's 16 years I've been doing this. Wow. Um, that's a celebration in and of itself. We've done a lot. We've made a lot of, done a lot of great things, but, uh, okay. So 16th, so what's going on the 16th? What do you have going on in your end? I've got, it's where I'm not spilling all the beans. I don't have it all worked out yet, but we're doing a, we're going to obviously do a, a fundraiser to get people to, um, donate $16 and then to get 16 of their friends to donate $16. That's one of them. I, we're going to do some videos and things. So it's going to be exciting. Um, one of the things kind of back to walk for Chicago to Madison, I'm going to be at the Milwaukee Pet Expo on February 3rd. So anybody listening out in Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, Madison land who would like to volunteer, just stop by and uh, chat with me at the Pet Expo. Yeah, it's great. Make some friends. Get everybody excited about uh, joining us on the trail. And the cool thing about this also, Ginger, about doing this almost entirely on trail systems is we can actually have people come out and walk with us safely. That, that's just something that's an Correct. impossibility. We had people that wanted to come out and walk with us um, near Warrensburg. Uh, no, it wasn't Warrensburg. Um, it's that funny, it's that funny named town in New York that you and I just butchered every time. It's near where uh, Greg, Greg and his wife and his family live. You know, it's spelled one way and pronounced another, but. 
I, I think I've just, I think I'm not starting your walk in a kind of a walk. Yes. Wisconsin. Sure. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a name all on its own. It takes, it has taken me what, I don't know, 15 years to figure out how to say that. But it's what people that want to come walk with us on the road, they, they realize very quickly how the dangers that is, that's involved and it's not a social thing. It's not, it's not fun. It's not social. You're, it's all business because you've got the reality of cars coming at you very quickly and it's just a fraction of a second a mistake could be made and that could cost you and your you and your my fuzzy butts their life or your fuzzy butts so we've never really only that's really that rails to trails and bridge crossings we have had wonderful bridge crossing right. adventures where people will come out but this is great because people and i think the weather will be great enough that people that are trailheads all along the way that we can do events, Ginger, and we can have people that can come out, take pictures, and just walk with us for a while safely off the road and and, and have a good time. This is I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to it because I'm going to have a good time. I, I couldn't have a good time of Walk Three. I was beat to hell the entire time. I was cold and freezing, starving and sick there for a long time. And it took a lot out of me. And Grayson was not happy. I don't think Grayson liked me. Grayson wouldn't even snuggle with me at night. So I was cold, too. It was weird. If I ever had to turn around, Grayson would get his feelings hurt. And he would go down to the bat, like to the other side of the tent. So I was cold and lonely and hurting and walked three the entire time. Man, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so I think walk four will be fun. And we'll have friends. And we'll be festive. And it will be Indiana. It's not his last ride, technically. Again, I don't think there's no reason to think that he won't be around. It's just mobility is getting worse. He's getting older like the rest of them. And uh, I just think this will be his last one that he could truly, I think, have fun and appreciate it and still be a pain in the ass, still chase some squirrels. You know, the- even Harrison Ford had a last, you know, he's not doing any more of the Indiana Jones. Oh, he's Jersey. a cupcake. I think he was only 80 in his last movie. Indiana will be 94. <laughs> 94. Well, if it's June, he'll be 13. And 13 times 7 is, what is that? That's a that's a big number. Was that 91? I think something like that. So he'll, in, for, for Walk 4, his, Indy's last adventure, Indy will be in his 90s, if not older. So... <clears throat> Harrison Ford. Yep, there you go. Yeah, but Harrison Ford was named, his character was named after his dog anyway. So that's why he was so cool. He was named after his dog. Half the time I make a vet appointment, I say that I make an appointment for Indiana Jones. And so the vets are like, I don't have an Indiana Jones. I'm like, oh, Robinson. (laughs) That's his gnome de guerre. So, all right, Ginger. So we've got that coming up. We've got something coming up on the 16th where this is the season three opener of Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Ginger will have an entire new episode next week on the 16th and 23rd. Yeah, that's right. The, the 23rd, we'll have a brand new episode. Episode two of season three of Fuzzy Butts and Friends coming up. Uh, Ginger, is there anything else that I left out or screwed up or forgot? Other than the intro and all everything else. <laughs> well, I did want to, you know. Uh, well, I think we've kind of learned our lesson on the early detection business, but um, you know, that's one of the things that I'm always talking about for cancer. But you know, with Indiana, with him not feeling well, you know, he's a hairy dog, so we missed, you know, we missed that spot on his elbow because it was covered up with hair. So. Um, you know, just check your dogs over if they're not feeling well, you know, touch them everywhere, check under the hair. And, you know, like we had to, that's, we gave him that bath and then I was, you know, you kind of blow dried him. And then I was trying to get him a little, little drier. And then that's when I realized that that hair was really matted up, not just for me giving him a bath, you know, just, not just from the bath. So, um, yeah. really check um, your dog really well. That's great advice, Ginger. You know, I, I I did make a note that summer. I can never read my notes. I don't even know why I make them other than just try to order something in my head. But I did. I have. I wanted to talk about that. I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, for especially for Pyrenees and long haired, um, um, dogs. Uh, you know, it's not always double coated dogs. Double coated, double fur uh, dogs. It's not easy to see. 
And it potentially could have been catastrophic if Ginger had not taken a closer look and shaved it for, uh, for further exploration, exploration to see, you know, what was, I think there was, it was pussy, right? Right. And that well, had caused well, the hair to all clump right. together it, it there. It was clumped together. And so, but we thought maybe it was something else, but we shaved it. And then that's where we found the ulceration in the exposed wound. And we were able to treat it aggressively topically and then orally systemically as as well but but you're exactly you're exactly right ginger and i i i guess maybe the reason subconsciously why i didn't want to get into that is i didn't really want to get into sort of a rant against veterinary medicine i have to say ginger i i and i don't really want to now but i i i'm disappointed in vet medicine and and being proactive and helping us take care of indy no one has ever uh, told us about i mean after the fact after you and i found this and he got the infection you were talking to somebody and said oh yeah well dogs that have have peripheral neuropathy and our our loss of mobility they tend to get these high gromas and these high gromas rupture causing ulcers and and i'm sitting you're sitting there listening that's like you think that information would have been good? Maybe you should have shared that before. You know, we've known about his neuropathy for a year now, and and it irritates me, Ginger. And I'm not naming names. Everybody, you know, there's no need to to, to to all the disclaimers and all that stuff. This is just a general rant that I'm seeing a number of vets in veterinary medicine, different practices, and I just a I just don't it, I don't see any communication proactivity. Or, or even treatment plan. Like it just seems like there should have always been, hey, your your Indiana has peripheral neuropathy. Here's all the things that you guys should should to consider that you need to be thinking about. And I just feel like veterinary medicine, and I also believe this to be true of human medicine. So I'm not just I'm not <clears throat> dissing uh, or or shading. Uh, veterinary medicine it may just be a function of medicine and the crazy world that we now live in and a whole host of other reasons but i see this in in human medicine in my own situation as well it's just i feel like the doctors were always behind something you know something happens and then there's a complication and the complication could have been the risk of the complication could have been minimized had there been uh you know uh, shared information so that's kind of the reason why I didn't want to get into it, Ginger, because it, it, I just I'm frustrated. I always feel like, oh, well, this is something else that happened uh, uh, by way or as a function of his peripheral neuropathy. But we should have told you before, but but now you're dealing with it now and you're behind. You're behind. And, and as you know, the older you get, and, and certainly with certain diseases like cancer, you just can't be you can't be behind. You can't be behind. You have to be uh, thinking about things. You have to be uh on the forefront and, and always anticipating problems and i don't think of medicine uh in in veterinary medicine and human medicine is not anticipatory i don't think it's prophylactic i don't think it's preventative and i don't think it's anticipatory so you got me on my rant anyway uh anyway you got that out of me so thank you for that <laughs> and i'm kind of sorry i mentioned it sorry. well no it's but don't don't you think it's important though don't don't you think well, I, I think I'm going somewhere with all this. I'm not okay. just ranting. Go ahead. Don't you think that we should do or look into uh, uh, people that are looking, doing more into prophylactic, preventative medicine, preventative care, rather than reactive care? No, that should be something we look into for, for the podcast, don't you think? Well, I, yes. I'll just answer that as yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it, I think, I have learned. That's my co. That's my co-producer, everybody, right there. Yeah, I Go have on. learned through having what twenty plus dogs in my life that, uh, you know, typically you're you're focusing on what's happening right in front of you, and even I think that yes, maybe somebody should have said you know they can get this, but I've had dogs that were like not necessarily. Um, as bad as Indy, but you know, I had um, Spencer or Grandpa Cranky Pants, as we call him, and he he didn't have those sores. I mean, I think it's going to be different with every animal, but yeah, maybe somebody should have said, "Hey, you need to watch for this," or um, looked or something. But you know, it. I, I it just, just think that we're fast. Yeah, and I know that. Um, you know, I'm watching other people right now with other 
their dogs have different diseases and the vet thinks it's this, this, and another vet thinks it's that. And, you know, and the, and the, that person is so confused and has done a lot of research and it's just, you know, people are treating what they, what you present them with at the time. Yeah, but, and, but it's like life on the road. It's like life in general. One thing, you know, that the lesson that I always have to, 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 to it's something you remind me when you get on the road is, is it's not really that more complicated than one, one foot after the other, right? Taking one step after the other. Well, that's yeah, true. Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> well, that's true. But, but you do have to be somewhat conscious and, and about the road ahead whether that's a mile, a couple of miles, a hundred miles, whatever that is, you, you do have to be able to anticipate uh, problems, um, uh, complications um, that may arise uh, from whatever you're doing, whether that's you're treating a disease or you're you're planning uh, a walk across the country. So so I understand it. And and again, it's, it's, it's just to... I, I'm always of the solution-oriented mindset. I don't rant. I try to find solutions, and I just don't think maybe medicine or veterinary medicine. We all hear them talk about it. Everyone's talking about multimodal treatments and this, but I just still don't hear a lot talked about uh, prophylactic, preventative care, and anticipatory care because it's almost like you know, it's not like it's not like dogs and the aging of dogs haven't been or has we we haven't known about that for a long time we're knowing about new complications new diseases that may arise and or the diseases like cancer may have evolved or become more complex and they're and by extension much more difficult to treat so on and so forth but i just it, it just seems like there should be a better framework a, a, an underlying framework for for medicine and i guess that's what i'm struggling with that's kind of where i'm going and i and i'm going to make make it put it on my list and it, it is it's foremost in my thoughts because i don't like being behind i don't like being reactive um especially when it's health hudson was a great example hudson was a consequence of just everyone dropping the ball and it just ended up at him dying and i didn't want to get in, into that too much but it's it's kind of that thing that i'm talking about and i just think that you, you you it's important for you to treat and to deal with the situation at hand but it's also more importantly be able to get back and see that in the much larger context so uh i guess that's it uh, that's all for this episode. I, it's important for for pet parents, and it and and there just needs to be a better framework for I think for vet, veterinary medicine, and and certainly in some cases um, is my thinking. All right, Ginger, you want to wrap it up? You look very excited. You're, you know, you know. If you, for those of you watching this on our YouTube channel, I think Ginger. Uh, I, I don't know. This this is Ginger at her at, at her prime right there. This is her not being amused. I've gone on some type of rant. And she's disengaged. So that's what that that's what that's what that's what producing fuzzy butts and friends is like. So, all right, let's wrap it up. Anything else you would like to add? You, you, Absolutely you, not. It's been <laughs> such a you spent such a joy going on going into season three. I can already look forward to a great season three of fuzzy butts and friends. All right, I kid everybody. We like to kid around. <clears throat> all right, that's the. Uh, oh, we got a lot going on. Twenty twenty four. A lot of work to do, and we'll have some exciting podcasts as well. We'll see you guys next week on the 20, 23rd. We'll be Tuesday. We'll drop episode two of season three of Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Ginger, on that note, puppy up, everyone. Puppy up. Talk soon.